Starting over can be such a difficult thing. I'm not sure that it's always just starting over, but I think it has so much more to do with change. It's crazy to think about how comfortable we get and even when things are painful, even when we know something's not right for us, the situation isn't fitting anymore, that we've outgrown whatever it is that we're doing, that we can manage to continue to be comfortable, to accept the things that are not up to the standards that we wish that they would be. Sometimes life throws a curveball in that sense and life changes the things that we are so comfortable with. That's exactly the situation that I'm in. There's a lot of acceptance going on right now. I'm doing my best to give myself grace. I'm trying to find joy in these hard times and I'm trying to just keep smiling and laughing through the pain while still allowing myself to feel the pain and not push it down and bury it away somewhere that I'll never touch it again until some time later. The most important thing to me still is to be a good mom but it's also to be a good person. I want more than anything to have the character of a beautiful person. There's so much talk these days about becoming her, becoming this different identity, wanting to be this person of your dreams. And while I do believe that, and obviously I had said even in my last video that I want to change, I want to be different because I know that I am so much more than the person that I've allowed myself to be. I'm so much more than what I've been giving even to my kids, but to myself and to the world and to my family. It feels so discouraging to know that there is this huge part of me that isn't being shared, that is just suppressed and hidden. It is out of shame and it's out of fear of rejection. But ultimately, when I reflect on my life now and I look at the situation that I'm in, when I see that my actual worst fear has come true, what do I have left to fear? Why would I hide myself anymore? Because look at what hiding got me. It reached my fear. Hiding literally provoked my biggest fear to come for a marriage to end for family to be what felt like taken away from me i believe that all of these things can be restored but it is so foolish of me to think that if i continue doing the things that i was doing to try to please other people to try to morph myself into something for someone else to just try to play small that it will then get me anywhere other than so far from myself courage gets talked about a lot when it comes to taking action and of course it does take courage to take those first steps to make a YouTube video and then post it. Like the actual posting of it does in fact take a lot of courage. It takes a lot of oomph but on top of that, that can't be taken away or dismissed. Of course the actual actions take a lot of courage. What also takes courage is having to change your mind. It takes courage to have enough faith to know that you can be better, that you can be the person that you know that you are on the inside and bring that to the outside. I honestly have realized that that takes more courage than anything because sometimes it can be easier to save face. It can be easier to convince yourself that you can fake it till you make it. It can be easier to put this persona out there, but you know, just like I know, what's real. Whenever we lie, whenever we are dishonest, whenever we disappoint ourselves, any of the things that are not in alignment with what we know our potential is, it hurts. And while other people might not know and other people may think highly of us or, you know, love us, which is so beautiful, I think at the end of the day, I know the truth about myself better than anybody does. I know where my heart is when I take certain actions or say certain things. I think all of those all of those things carry thoughts and those thoughts carry energy and having the courage to take a stand and try to change the way you think, to take the courage to actually change the way that you're looking at yourself, changing the perception of yourself actually does take a lot of courage because it's very easy to be hard on yourself. It's very easy to be critical. To the outside, it might look like you love yourself perfectly or that you do take care of yourself. This is why it's so important to know who you are and why you do this things that you do. It's not necessarily about picking at it so much that you're trying to open more wounds or creating more problems for yourself, but that is so important. It's detrimental to develop a strong understanding of who you are and how you became who you are, but then also to understand who you are really. But it's all scary. The unknown is scary. Being willing to put yourself out there and get rejected is scary. We try to avoid pain at all costs, but at what point is trying to deflect and 
get away from pain actually causing more pain than just doing the thing. I'm not just trying to change for myself. I'm trying to change for my kid. I want to change so much about the trajectory and even the family line of the ways and the habit and the thought patterns that have come. I do think that it's possible, but I know that it all starts with me. It starts with me doing the work. It starts with me understanding fully what it is that I am even thinking about myself. What are those subconscious thoughts? The best way that I can think to do this it really is diving back deeper into my faith. I know that might be a unpopular topic for many people, but for me, I really do believe that the more I've pushed God away out of disappointment and hurt for feeling that he hasn't been there for me, that he hasn't taken care of me the way that I thought he was supposed to, the more I just became the worst version of me possible. And now I feel like I'm at my current rock bottom in my life and I'm in a place that I never would have thought that I would be if he would have asked me 10 years ago or ever So when I'm studying the Bible and looking to deepen my understanding and just lean into God during this hard time, it's actually just helped me so much, especially because it's brought me back to prayer. Prayer has been so healing for me during this time, partially because it's given me the opportunity to just speak my deepest thoughts out loud. And just hearing myself speak, hearing myself share these thoughts actually almost is like a form of journaling to me. And it's almost been helping me process through everything that's been going on in such a beautiful way. I've been so thankful for that because it's really shed a light and opened my eyes to so many things, so many unhealthy habits and thought processes, but also just really shedding the truth on so many areas, even in this relationship that were not right for me, that were not good for me, and things that other people would say to me that I just couldn't receive because I felt like there was no other option. In my mind, divorce was not an option. In my mind, it everything after kids you have to just fight that much harder in a way this forced the hand into something that maybe I knew wasn't that good and I feel like prayer has really been just a safe place for me to process all of the things that have gone on in the last five years of my life and process the person that I feel that I'm called to be and just reassess all of these characteristics and values. I think that's another reason that journaling can be so handy because it's just a safe space to unload and I would highly recommend that if you are not someone who likes to write or to journal just even speaking things out loud. Whether or not you believe in God, whether or not you would declare yourself as a Christian, I think there's so much power in prayer. And ultimately, prayer is really just about acknowledging that there is someone higher than ourselves. And I know that not everybody also believes in that. I think some really amazing things can come out of prayer because it's not always just about confession. It's not always just about asking for something that you want. It really is a place where you can just find peace. It's a place where there is solitude, but there is also a place where there is just no judgment. There's just listening, where you can cry, where you can confess great, great parts of yourself and not have to hear a response, not have to try to find a solution. The magical part of it all is that oftentimes there are solutions presented and there are beautiful things that are given. And I think that is something that can't be overlooked and is hard to deny once you actually start a prayer practice. So having courage and coming back to my faith have ultimately been my saving graces during this time right now. And it's a habit that I'm developing and continue to deepen and develop for the rest of my life. It's something that I have now lived with and lived without and I can say for a fact that I am better mentally, emotionally, and physically when I am in relationship with God and have a prayer practice. I am so much more self-aware. I am so much kinder to myself and it allows me to also be a cushion for other people in my life. It helps give grace to other people in my life. It's just that character shaping and building. I am so thankful to be coming back to my faith and I'm so thankful to just have something to fall back on that doesn't require any person or anyone but it just requires me and time alone with God and reading the Bible and researching and understanding and searching my heart. It's something that I can't recommend enough. It doesn't have to take long little prayers, little acknowledgments. You will become so much more self-aware and in it I feel like you can gracefully get through really difficult times.